Hello and welcome to a new episode of the Blender Developer Sneak Peek. My name is Thomas Beck and I'll present you in this series the newest features for Blender that are currently in development. And this episode is a bit of special, a special episode because um, I was very busy writing my book in the last time, so I didn't quite catch up. And I will, in this episode, as Blender will be released today or tomorrow, catch up all the features that I missed since the last time. And therefore, it will be a bit more than usual. But I hope you enjoy it nevertheless. The first thing is the Google Summer of Code uh, 2013 and 2014 uh, um, project from Anthony Riakiotakis. It's the Google Summer of Code Painting Editions. And now we are have a look at those. Before we're starting with the uh, Google Summer of Code features, I'd like to uh, give you another information and that is that the screencast keys add-on is now being uh, removed from Blender. And that means that you have to switch to other solutions and I switch to Keymon that's for uh, a program for Linux. So if you're interested in it, just check it out. It's shown here. So let's look at the new features for our painting things. Um, first of all, you have to switch to the texture paint mode and then you'll see object didn't have UV map, manual you unwrap recommended. And that means that it's automatically unwrapped already and if you would start to paint now, you would see it immediately. And that is a big difference from uh, Blender 2.71, where you couldn't paint um, as easy as you could here. But as you know, manual unwrap is really important. So let's do that. Switch to the object mode. Um, insert a new object. Let's take Suzanne here and do a quick unwrap via the U Smart UV project. So that should be it. And now let's switch to the texture mode again. And then let's immediately switch to the slots uh, panel, slots tab here. And then you see that there was a uh, texture painting slot created automatically and this texture painting slot is called material diffuse color and then you would say okay there are surely more than only the diffuse color and that's right there is a diffuse intensity of alpha translucency specular color and so on and whenever you add a new uh, texture painting slot here let's for example add a specular color slot then you can um, define the size and then a new texture is created here, as you can see here. The diffuse color is this one, the specular color is this one. And when you select those and you're painting on it, for example, a white paint here and there, and you change it, then you see that it's automatically changing this layer, this paint layer. And that is already really cool but what's uh, really cool nevertheless apart from that is that the blend type is settable so if you got an alpha uh, texture painting slot and you'd like to multiply it as I do normally then you would just uh, set it here and it's set there automatically when I choose the alpha see so that is the um, this is the texture painting slot uh, stuff, and the next thing I'd like to show you is here in the tools panel we got man, uh, many brushes: the soften brush, smear, uh, draw, and the normal brush. And apart from that, we got color palettes. Finally, when you click on new here and you got a color like blue and pink and you'd like to switch between those two permanently then you would have to uh, take sample those colors uh, e uh, every time you'd like to paint on them 
with them. And so it would be very convenient to have a color palette and Anthony implemented that. So just hit this plus sign and you got a new color palette here, uh, a color swatch here. When you need a new color, then just hit the plus sign more often. And when you like to sample a color from your mesh here, then just hold down S and click and the sampled color will immediately show up here. So let's just sample a few and then you see that the color palette is working great. And as you can see here, we got many colors now there, but there are still two color swatches here. And you're wondering what is this and what is this? And that's like in the, the GIMP or Photoshop or wherever else, it's the foreground and the background color. So you could def, uh, def, define a blue, uh, bluish color for the foreground. And uh, let's say, red color for the for the background and when you'd like to switch uh, switch between them when you are painting then just paint and then hold control and paint and you can easily paint with foreground and background colors so that's another improvement then I'd like to show you the the uh, stroke panel damn it stroke panel and on the stroke panel, there are two new cool modes, the line modes, where you just drag your line and it gets painted. Easy, very easy, but very cool. And, and I like this, um, this uh, mode, mode very, very much, is the curve method. When you like to paint a curve then you just have to control click a curve and hit enter and it gets painted and if you like to move the curve then just um, grab all those control points and hit enter again or rotate them or scale them with s so all things that you possibly like to do are available. And when you uh, don't want those edgy curves like I have here, then just hold shift while um, using the, your left mouse button and you have control handles that are influencing the curve. So this is a data type too. So a data block too. So if you'd like to have another curve, then you just click new curve, new one, and then define a new curve like this. And when you're saying, okay, I'd like my other curve back, then just use this curve, uh, this data block, and you got your other curve again. So that is very easy and very cool. Then um, let me just look if I forgot something. Yeah, I forgot something. And th this, this are the, plain, the blend modes. You got 16 different blend modes now. And um, all those blend modes are um, the same as in Photoshop or GIMP. So that shouldn't be uh, very new, but it's cool to have nevertheless. And another thing is if you are using your, let me just um, define that as the space or yeah, the space mode. Um, if you're using the F for the size or the shift F for the strength, then you uh, would have seen that normally you don't have a precision mode. So to say, if you'd like to have a very, very uh, small increasement of this um, of this strength or this size then you wouldn't be able to hold shift but in the new version you can hold shift hold shift and you see that it's very slowly increasing or decreasing so there are precision modes now for those things and i think i covered many of the uh, new features for the painting 
uh, Google Summer of Code Painting Editions. If you like to know more, then I would say consult the release logs. There is um, everything written down there. And we're going to have a look at some new features now. Let's now look at another long awaited feature and that is the Pi menus. Pi menus are official shipped with Blender now. And here, as, as an add on, I have to admit, because uh, many of you were complaining, why is it an add on? Uh, that's very simple because now you are able to uh, write your own uh, Pi menus very easily. And if it, it would be bound to the core, then um, only the core developers would be able to extend the pies. So just enter pi here and you see the pi menu official, enable it and you got your pies working. Just hit tap and there is the new pi menu. Uh, pies are working like this. Just hold the pi button, whatever this button is, then uh, move your mouse in the direction that you'd like to select and let the Pi button go like this. And when you're used to it, as you can see, it's very fast. And um, the cool thing about the mode Pi is that you are now able to select different modes and not only the object or the edit mode. And that's, um, you don't have to, to uh, choose this, to uh, choose this mode via this uh, selection box. Uh, that is the first uh, pie that I'd like to show you. Ah, what I almost forgot, those um, numbers here enable you to select them still via your um, numpad or, your, or a number. When you'd like to select the object mode, then you could on, um, always press 4 and it would be selected equally with the vertex mode vertex paint mode via 7. So that would be another way to select the mode. And there are, there is the Q menu that is uh, changing your view. Left, right, perspective, everything is there. Then we got the manipulator mode, uh, pie menu via control and uh, a space. That is very cool too. Then there is the Z shading. Um, Pi that uh, enables you to easily uh, select the shading mode of your viewport, like the rendered view. And uh, that is a bit new, I know, but when you enable it and you're getting used to it, you are so much faster. It is really incredible. So I I'm really happy that uh, we had so much complaint f complaints from our initial Pi creators via, via an add-on. Then um, Anthony that uh, took his heart and implemented it uh, right away. And uh, I'm really happy to have it in Blender now. So just use it and give feedback. Let's now look at another feature that I know many of you are waiting for. And that is the uh, freestyle um, feature for cycles. So let's first switch to cycles there. And um, the freestyle feature is extremely simple to enable. Just click this checkbox as in the Blender internal and um, increase the line thickness if you'd like to and render. And you'll see that is rendered with cycles and freestyle edges. So nothing new here, but one thing is new, and that is if you got two objects like I've, I've created here, and you have two materials, let me just make them separate, material one and material two. And there is a new panel out there that's located here. And there you can say, okay, I'd like to have my freestyle line that you're drawing around my object in pink and this one in uh, brown brown color brownish color and when you now um, head over to the freestyle render layer panel again and then switch to the color then you can add this modified in material modifier and when you're rendering now then you'll see everything is done 
as you'd like to. So that was the second thing I'd like to show you with the uh, freestyle um, feature. But there is a third one and that is textured strokes. And for this I have to uh, sh let the uh, node editor show up. And there you see a new type of data and, and shade, a new shader tree that you can activate via a click. And that is the line style sh uh, shader tree. And there you should just enable use nodes. Then you, uh, then everything is set up for you already. Here you can uh, load up a new image, uh, existing image, or um, as I am doing it like now, uh, creating a new image and drawing something on it, like for example a circle, a crappy circle. I have to admit, or let it be an, a crappy flowerish whatever it, it won't get it won't be better if I uh, paint anymore now um, then I'm using this image texture here and just render and you'll see oh it's pretty tiny let me increase the freestyle line thickness a bit more and then you'll see hopefully that it's textured and so uh, in this manner you're creating textured strokes so let's now look at the next feature let's now look at the array modifier in the recent build as you can see here that's blunder 2.71 and um, the array modifier was completely re rewritten so let's just first have a look at the old one I've got a field of cubes that is 150 by 150 parts. And when I change this counter here, so to let's say to 149, then you see that he's calcula calculating quite a bit before the viewpoint is updated and the operation is successful. And now let's look at the new version. That is this one. And we are uh, equally the same uh, 150 by 150. And when I now um, increase the number, then you'll see how fast it is. Actually, it's in recent measurements, it's uh, 100 times faster than the old one. So if you, for example, would like to have 400, then you could easily just do 400 and as you can see we are now out of the, of the view uh, viewport clipping plane so uh, that's really awesome how fast it is and that was the new array modifier in the new build the next feature is concerning uh, masks in blender so i've rendered something then switched to the mask mode already and create a new mask now and as you can see, that's nothing new. That's as uh, as before. So, and when I'm now um, setting the mass display to um, overlay combined, then you'll see everything is working. And previously, you would have marked all those control points if you'd like to grab and transform this ma this mask and then you would have uh, pressed G and everything would have worked. But the problem is that when you have an, select, an existing selection like this already, then you always have to lose this selection because you have to mark everything before you uh, could grab the mask and move it. Now that's not uh, needed anymore. You could, for example, mark those control points and then use this little uh, track dot here in the middle via left mouse button and then you could track the complete mask so that's very easy now thanks to Sergey. Let's now have a look at some minor but nevertheless important features. The first one is there are new drag handles on panels as you can see here we got those little squared drag handles those are functionality wise no uh, not different than the um, than the previous one 
but they make the draggable area a bit more clear and so we use them. Then we got a 30% speed up in the Gaussian Blur node. That is uh, a huge performance gain for all those of you that are using the, those nodes. Then there is a new tool, the Intersect tool. And for that, let me just do a short demo like this. We're searching for Intersect. I have searched before. I've uh, searched uh, after it before, therefore you're seeing it here, then you select it and tell him to uh, cut the self-intersection out. And when you now delete this or end the cut out piece, then you'll see that it is cutting out all the geometry where it is intersecting. Then uh, last thing that is maybe not um, not visible at first sight is that the volumetrics, the volumes, uh, are now enabled for GPU, but not smoke and not fire. So um, for those two, you still are relying on CPU. And now let's come to the HSL RAMs. That is the next feature I'd like to show you. For the HSL RAMs, I uh, prepared a simple scene, really very simple scene, that I'd like to render permanently in the um, rendered viewport shading mode. And as you can see here, that's fairly simple, a generated texture coordinate as an input in the factor, then it uh, ranges from blue to uh, and a lighter blue and then it's uh, feeding the diffuse BSDF color uh, socket and then it's rendered out. So you got a nice ramp from there to there. And when you now select the HSL or HSV uh, ramp color mode, then you'll see immediately a rainbow is generated. And that is perfect for all kinds of motion graphics when you when you got uh, particles or something like that flying around, then you will use that really often. Um, I love it really since the day one that it was introduced here. So I'm sure that it will help you um, extremely. And another really cool feature has been implemented by the Blender devs lately, the Sunbeams node. And the Sunbeams node does the following. She analyzes the image, the lighter portions of the image, and then generates a blurred uh, sunbeams-like version of it. And this can be uh, viewed easily when we connect the viewer node with the sunbeams now. Then you'll see, oh, okay, those streaks are generated. And when you add that back to the original image, like this, then you can see those have an uh, effect like god rays or sunbeams and when you are uh, when you'd like to have a different direction here then you would just change this um, those two per parameters and everything would work and that is the sunbeams node Last but not least, there are some cycles features changed. The first one is located in the light path panel. And there you see it's now um, reflective caustics and refractic, uh, ref refractive caustics enabled. Um, previously, we had one check checkbox here that confused many users, uh, including myself, and that uh, was um, titled no caustics, I think. And now we got um, two caustics. We can separately enable or disable the reflective component of the caustics or the refractive con component of the caustics. And that is really helpful for different scenes. The next thing is the uh, feature set for GPU is not only supported, but experimental is there too. That is for all of you that like to test new features and um, this feature set will uh, contain many things that are con not considered stable or feature complete. So 
um, previously we were compiling many versions for you guys that like to test new features and now you could just switch to experimental and test it right away in your normal build and the last one is uh, when you're under, the, under cycles and you are looking at this ratio setting here then you see that with this setting you can do anamorphic lens bokeh and um, to make it a bit easier for me I just opened the Blender Code website and there you can find examples for this and let's just look at that here you can see the this roundish normal bokeh and when you use the ratio then it's stretched and this is very visible let me see where was it i think here is it very visible it's stretched along this um, this frank character and here you can see with normal values 1.0 then it's not stretched at all so that was everything for the um, new planner developer sneak peek i hope that you liked this sneak peek if you had much fun then share this video i really appreciate every share and i really appreciate that you guys are giving those much uh, comments and positive feedback and add us on Twitter, Google Plus or Vimeo. And we see us next time. Bye.